Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. Now, on this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. They get a choice. Okay. Sit down with one of our regular <laughs> dealers. They're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. A thousand pounds. I think you could just go a little bit more. Oh. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say, no way. Don't accept that. Have a gamble. Go to auction. You might get a few quid more there. Sold. Today, the show comes to you from Scunthorpe. There's a great crowd of people here. They've been here since early this morning. They are determined to do business. You know why? They want to walk away with the real deal. First up, Alison Chapman, who's in the throes of a romance. Excellent. Well, I love them. Oh, good. How much do you want for them? <laughs> a lot. Do you? Yes. Mm. I've got well, three older sisters, and whatever I get has got to be divided four ways. And, of course, I'm the little sister, and if I don't return with the goods, they'll... Tell you uh, off. Exactly, yes. Well, they're all by Jane Stinton, who was a wonderful real Worcester artist. Um, 1937, and they are just full of gold. Yeah. I mean, these are the plates of millionaires. Absolutely. So how did you come by them? They were my late father's. He bought them in the late 70s, early 80s, and put them on display at home, and uh, they've been there ever since. And, of course, my mum's decided to downsize. Obviously, my father passed away several years ago, and she decided that uh, we should let them go. Do we know what he paid for these? Yes, I know what he paid for them. It won't make any difference to what I'm no. going to offer. because What was it? He paid £1,000 for them. In? In that, but the late 70s, early 80s. They're not worth that today, which I find interesting. Mm, yes, I, I understand that, because obviously the market's... Different. Fair, it's different, but, yeah. Well, these have been made by Royal Worcester mm -hmm. for Asprey. Yeah. And we can see here all this wonderful gold gilding. It's just yes. superb, the depth. And this costs money. Yeah. Well, I'll have a stab at them. OK. And see what you make of it. I shan't muck you about. Right. There's 100, 200 for one plate. 100, 200 for the second. 100. 200 for the third. Right. Mm. 600 pounds. The squidging more. No, because I didn't want to muck you about to yeah. insult you. You told me what uh, was paid for, for them, them. Yeah. and I wanted to come out strong and clean. The thing is, I probably shan't be selling them. You'd be keeping them. Yes. In 30 years' time, it will probably be one of my daughters yes. sitting at a similar table. <laughs> and let's hope when they say, oh, yes, and mum paid £600 yeah. for them, they're shown a profit. But, yeah. but if they had not shown profit, I will have had the pleasure of, of enjoying the best of its kind. And mm -hmm. to me, that's a bargain. Yeah. Well, it's a deal then. Sure. Yes, thank you. As long well, as you promise to love them and look after them. I will do. And <laughs> thank, thank you. you so much. I was undone and totally seduced by them as soon as I saw them on my table. I knew I would be going home with them. That's made Alison's day. Across the dealer's den, Steph has brought something very delicate for Debbie Serple. But what exactly is it? Steph, tell me about the history of this piece you brought in today. Um, well, I know it's from London and it's, it's very old, that's, but that's all I know, really. Right. And uh, it was my granddad, he was a collector, an antiques collector, and he found it. But that's all I know about it. So you don't know where granddad got it no. from? No. And it wasn't, it wasn't in, uh, something someone's worn that was in your family? No. It's something granddad's it collected? Got, yeah. It was, a big, it was a big antiques collector. OK. It's a lovely thing. I think people would call it a nurse's belt. I think that it has had an overlay of gilding at some point. Can you see where we've got the silver showing through here yeah. on the buckle area? And then as you go down here, these little sections are quite gilded mm. in areas. Now, what happens with gilding is it's a very fine layer of gold overlaid on top of silver. 
and where the buckle is is where it would have been handled yeah. more so that area the gold wears off it's not it's not problematic again although they're very well hidden in these little patterned areas are clear hallmarks but you have to look for them yeah, really um, I, I had difficulty to begin with but each one of these has got a hallmark so all the way down there we have a hallmark for london 1900 which is what you said you yeah. thought it was from london so lovely lovely piece its downside uh, is that it's quite small yeah. um, it would only fit someone who is incredibly slim yeah. so let's put some money on the table and see what you think start with a 50 pound note how do you feel about that uh, i don't think that's enough yet. not enough no okay 70 still not enough still not enough we're getting there yeah, yeah. 90 pounds how do you feel about that? I feel like it's still not enough. Still not enough. Yeah. I'm getting nearly there. Um, so I'm going to go one more and make it 100. I, I was thinking about 160 and then no less than 160. No less than 160. Yeah. I think the best place for you auction. would be to go to auction. Are you happy with that? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Have you ever been to auction before? Yeah, I've been to an auction before. You'll have a great time and you'll be well looked after. And it is a super thing, it really is. And thank you so much for bringing it in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, thanks. It's a no sale from Devi Steph, but you've grabbed yourself a date with the Duke over at the auction. Let's see how the belt fares under the gavel of auctioneer Colin Young. Now, Steph, on the dealer's day, you brought along a pierced silver belt decorated with flower heads and, and foliate scrolls. It's marked London 1900. Now, you turned down the £100. Yeah. Why? Is it obvious? I suppose you wanted more no, money. I wanted more money. <laughs> so you fancied a gamble, come into the auction. You know that there is a commission to deduct whatever we get here. The question is, are we going to do better? The reserve is £120. Uh, lot number 60 is a pierced silver belt, London 1900. Very nice item, this. Who's going to start me? 100, 100, 100 bid. And 10 now do you have for me? At 100, 110, 120. At 120, we're on the market at 120. Is there five anywhere else now? At 120 bid. 120, it's right on the reserve. By the door, selling at 120. 120, take away the commission. It's about 100. £607, pounds, something like that. Are you satisfied with yeah, that? Yeah, I'm satisfied. Any idea what's going to happen to the money? Is it going to the family or is it going with you? It's going with me. <laughs> Any idea what you're going to spend it on? Is it holidays, Ibiza? Uh, maybe. 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 <laughs> Those were the days, weren't they? Ibiza. <laughs> cool believers. Great. OK. Take home 106, which was a little bit more than our dealer offered. Happy? Yeah. Very happy, maybe going on holiday, that was the real deal. David Hakeney has gold jewellery all over his table and Gail wants the cash for a very special occasion. Well, you brought some uh, jewellery in today. That's right. Here it is, we've got half a sovereign here. And all the rest is nine carat gold, I presume? This will be 22 carat, the coin. So, really, today, uh, the terrible word uh, bullion or scrap really applies to this sort of jewellery, really, because it's not very popular anymore. No. They seem to want silver jewellery or white gold. That's right. These days. So you've got some chains here, a tie clip, bracelet and some rings. Are these things you've been in the drawer, not using? Yeah, they've just accumulated from various places over the years and just surplus to requirements, really, so... We weighed this nine-carat gold here and it weighs about 60 grams and the coin here will weigh around about four grams, half a sovereign, so there's a lot of money here. Mm -hmm. So I'll get some cash out and try okay. and uh, spend it. What are you going to use the money on? Well, we're getting married this year. Oh, very so, nice. Um, Congratulations. Every, every little help. Well, it does. You need uh, <laughs> plenty of durian me to get married, don't you? Really? You do. So I better not mess about and go straight in with a 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500. It's heading in the right direction. But not enough. But it's not enough, no. 
that's, well, that's probably worth 120 on its own, mm -hmm. isn't it? Well, 550, 600. So that's 700 pounds. Right, it's getting close. I know you're getting married. I'm not paying for the whole wedding, am I? <laughs> no, it's expensive cake. <laughs> well, uh, I think I'm getting fairly close. I've got to be honest with you, Gail. OK. I think we can f fairly say what is here is going to go into the bullion field. As of today, the spot price of gold, this parcel here, is £830. £700 is on the table. I think if there was another 50 quid in there, I'd say forget about taking them elsewhere. You've got to give a profit to our dealer. Another 50 quid, Dave? I'll never say no to girls. 50 quid, it, go. If there was another 50 quid in there, there'd be a £100 profit for our dealer. I wouldn't try and take them to an auction, but I think you've got the best price you probably can get. Right, I'll accept your offer and agree with David. Thank you very much. I hope the wedding goes down great. I'm sure there's money that'll help it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really pleased with the money I've received today for the gold. I didn't realise it would be um, worth quite as much. Well, I hope the gold price stays till next week, uh, so I'll uh, lose money on this. Time will tell, David. We'll find out a bit later. Coming up, one seller didn't have high hopes for these salt dishes. Did you have any real expectations with what could look like a bit of old tat? No, I didn't, David. But will seasoned dealer Simon up the odds? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Our next seller is Paul, who's brought along a pair of dishes he knows little about. Can Simon Schneider fill him in? Now, how did you end up owning these little silver salts? They're actually owned uh, by my father-in-law. Uh, he was a doctor and he used to dabble a little bit in antiques, um, particularly with silver. They are old, but not really too sure how old they are. These are old. Yeah. In fact, they're very old. OK. I've had a look at them earlier. The stamps on them are pretty unclear. They're pretty rubbed. Yeah. But with a lot of research, I've managed to date them to what I believe to be about 1697. Oh, right. Okay. They're what's known as Britannia Standard Silver, yeah. which started around that time and sort of, I think, went on to about 1720. And the Britannia mark is a different mark to the rampant line that you normally find on, on a okay. silver hallmark. Yeah. They're approximately 300 years old. So yeah. your father-in-law obviously did have an eye. I think he had a very good eye. He yeah. had a good yeah. eye for collecting antique silver. I think what's quite interesting, they're a pair of salts. Yeah. They would have been on a, t a dining table with a lot of other probably big silver centrepieces, all sorts of silver plates, things. We're talking about 300 years ago. What's quite interesting is the condition they're in, because although the marks are rubbed, they're in remarkably good condition. They're not particularly heavy gauge of silver either, you no. know. So the fact that they've sort of remained in this condition after all that time is, is quite remarkable, really. They're very nice. Now, normally a pair of silver salts, even a Georgian pair, probably around 100 quid, something like that. OK. I'm going to offer you a little bit more for them. Oh, that. that's good, that's good. There's a hundred pounds. That's say if they were like, I don't know, 100, 150 years old. 200 pounds. I suppose that would be about, what, 200 years old, 250 yeah, years old. Yeah. 260 pounds. That's because they're 300 years old. Impressed? Um, yeah, slightly. Oh, good. It's a deal. No. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, oh, there's 260 pounds on the table. Let's hear David's opinion. OK. Of now, when you came along today, Paul, did you have any real expectations with what could look like a bit of old tat? No, I didn't, David. Well, our specialists have had a look at them, and we think they're probably about 1690s, 1697. They are collectible, they're rare and desirable. Now, the independents are saying three to four hundred pounds. I'd be thinking, if the marks were very visible and they were mint, I'd be thinking 400 plus again. I think they're in remarkable condition for their age, first of all. They're in very good condition. But I think because the marks are so rubbed, I see them at 300 pounds. Now, 260 is a bit on the light side. 
If you got just over the £300, I'd be saying, not a bad deal. But I think you're a bit light at the moment. Mmm, the plot thickens. Paul, I like them. I'd like to buy them. I'd like to own a bit of silver that they're sold. But I'm going to put down another £40. I'm going to make it up to £300. But that's going to be my final offer. Got a deal? You stretch even another 20? I'm going to stick to the 300 because right. I think there's, I'm hoping there's still a profit in them. But okay. I know that it's a slight gamble for me because, because of the hallmarks. Yeah. OK. We have Check a deal. Hand. Thanks very much Thank for bringing you. them in today. Let's head back to Debbie's table, where I spy with my little eye one game bird. Viv, you brought in a pheasant. I have, yes. Tell me about it. Right, it belonged to my father, and I've had it three years since he died. Um, he's had it quite a long time because he was a pheasant fanatic. It was something that my mother bought him, I suppose, for a birthday or Christmas gift at some time. Right. So was he a huntsman? He used to do shooting, a little bit of shooting um, in his younger days. And did they use it for its purpose? No. No, no. no. And do you, kn you know what the smoked. purpose was? It's a cigarette lighter. That's right, that's right. It's a very rather grand table it lighter. It is, yes. And this piece on the end here comes away mm -hmm. and in front of the, the log there's a striker. Should we have a go at striking it? And it creates a spark, spark. And, mm -hmm. and you would light your tobacco. Yes, yeah. I'm sure there's no prize for guessing that the days of um, smoking in a house, let alone around the table, right. are uh, long gone. I'm sure they are now. And as a dealer, I, I sort of take that into account mm -hmm. when I see these things, because from my point of view, I want to be able to sell it That's again. That's right. Tell me why you're selling it. Because it's just not anything that I would ever use. So the time has come for it to go. In a sense, that worries me because that's what I'm thinking as well. I'm thinking. Yes, but I'm not keen on pheasants. Somebody who okay. likes pheasants would probably like that as an ornament. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. As a piece, it's very, very well done. Mm -hmm. The painting is exquisite. You can see the face here all picked out mm -hmm. very carefully with someone with a great deal of skill. And when I first saw it, I thought immediately that we were looking at maybe um, an Austrian cold painted mm. bronze. But actually, it's made of spelter, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes, I believe so. Um, which is the poor man's version That's of right. bronze. It's without a shadow of a doubt a 20th century piece. Mm. But I'll make you an offer. Thank you. I hope you don't think I'm being horribly mean. 20. 40 pounds. I was thinking of a little bit more than that, actually, okay. yes. Let's try 50 pounds, and I, I think I'm there. I was thinking of just um, it's more than that, a little more, more than, than that. that. Yes, more than that. If I take the 10 away, and put down 60. I think that would be my final offer. It's, it's a good offer, but I think I, I would like a, a, a more, please. Well, let me tell you what the independent values of the auctioneers say. It's 1930s, they say 50 to 80. Mm -hmm. 60 is on the table. Will it make more than the auction? It might do because of its condition, mm. but you need the right person, yeah. someone who likes game birds and so forth. I think it's a fair offer that's on the table, but if you fancy a gamble, you may get more, but I wouldn't guarantee it. OK, thank you. So, Viv, you've heard what David said, 60 on the table. I'm, I'm not going to make any more of an offer. That's as far as I want to go. How do you feel yeah, about that? that's fine. I'm quite happy with 60. Are you sure? Yes, I'm positive. you sure you don't want to go to auction? No, that's fine. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank We've got a much. deal. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to be able to squeeze the profit. It'll be interesting to see. Um, it's not particularly um, something that people want these days, but it's a decorative item. We'll see how we go. Across the room, a little vase made by you-know-who has planted itself onto David's table. Hello, Jean. Well, you've bought a piece of uh, Moorcroft in here. Everybody knows what this looks like, don't they? Yeah. Are you a collector of Moorcroft? I am, yes. I've got a few pieces. Have you? Yeah. Well, you put your money in the right place. Yes. 
this isn't so old, this piece, is no, it? No, no, it's not. I can see that by the, uh, the, the colours. They're yeah. just that bit brighter than the uh, the older pieces of Moorcroft. Yeah. So, Jean, tell me why you're selling it. Uh, well, I, it don't fit in anymore. I, I uh, prefer the darker ones. Is this something you've had a long time, this one? No, about maybe three to four years. So, so you've got a big collection, have you? Uh, I've got about ten pieces. Oh, very good, yes. <laughs> Well, I must say, it's ever and ever popular, this yeah. uh, Moorcroft. It doesn't seem to have had any uh, lows. It keeps no, seem to no. keep on the way up all the time, a bit like gold. <laughs> 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 Let's have a look underneath and see what it says. There we are, Moorcroft. And it's dated as well, which is yeah. rather nice. As you can see, what year it is? 204. Yeah. But it's very, very nice quality. Well, you can see why people like it, can't mm. you? There we are. Shall I get some cash out and see if I can buy it off you? Yeah, we'll have a go. We'll get the spondoolies <laughs> out. What about £50, Jean? No. No? Nobody says yes straight away, do they? <laughs> no. <laughs> £70. Mm, no. I think it's worth a lot more, do you? Yeah. What about £90? Must be warming up now, Jean. Mm. You're not far off, but not yet. Mm. I think I really want to give a lot more than £90. Oh, you do. It's very hard for me to sell the more modern. It's beautiful, it's perfect. I know, but I've got to get a little bit of profit out of this. Oh, you, know? you will do. You will do. I don't think I'd want to give any more. Mm. I'll give a hundred quid. A little bit more? You're an Ira nice girl. Let me say £110 and that would be my lot. You want to go to auction, don't you? No, not really. Let me make your mind up. 120. 120. That's a good bid for a piece of modern Moorcroft. Jean. David. <laughs> I'm being too generous. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you say no. Uh, OK, then we'll have a deal. OK. That's okay. a good bid, isn't it? Because I like you. <laughs> <laughs> I got 120, um, very pleased, and um, I've made a small profit. Profit's profit, Jean, no matter That's how small. Fine. Well done. Just, I'm being too generous. Coming up, compliments at the start of a deal should yeah. bode well. My name's Tony, nice to meet you. Tony. You are my favourite. Am I? Yes. But will flattery get him anywhere with Alison? Welcome back to Dickinson's real deal from Scunthorpe in Lincolnshire. As the antiques and collectibles pour in, it's over to Alison to catch up on a bit of light reading. My name's Tony, nice to meet you. Tony. You are my favourite. Am I? Yes. Oh, yes. you just after I watch my hot every, cash. Every day, yeah. don't we? Yeah. Good, well, I'm glad. That's pleased me. That's, yeah. that's worth a tenner to me, the Good. fact I'm your favourite. <laughs> so, you've come with your father. Uh, to sell these big books? Yes. Well, what an interesting load of stuff. So these are the journals of the House of Commons. Yeah. I was going to skip them. I was demolishing a garage and uh, most of the rubbish went in the skip. And I just kept these and they've been in the loft for 10 years. Yeah, you wouldn't, have, wouldn't use them as a quick read, would you? Oh, no, I can't <laughs> read them. I can't read them. Can you them. imagine? Um, I mean, they're early. Yeah. This one, as I open it... This one is 1708 or something, wasn't it? In the year of Queen Anne. So 1708. Don't know anything about them. No, I don't. Do you don't. know if there are many things? Many no, things? I don't know nothing whatsoever. I wonder if it's a bit more interesting then than it is today. Have you ever watched them on telly? No. no. You've never seen the House of Commons on no, telly? No, no, I don't watch that. They argue all the time. I know arguing, they do. I know. Arguing. Yeah. Do you like them? No, not that We way. want to get rid of them, don't There's we? There's no pictures in them, is there? No. 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 Can't say they really float my boat either, but someone out there will collect these and no doubt find them very interesting. I do think the condition of them... Yeah, I know the binding's a bit bad, yeah. 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 So that might still be still worth some a... money. They're very Never. keen, aren't yes. you, Tony? Oh, yes. You're... You want just to get the deal done, yes. don't you, really? OK. Well, we'll see what you've got. Are you working on commission for your father, or have you asked him for a cut at all? No. She'll get some. You need at least 10%. Yeah. 
Do you know what 10% of 50 pounds is? Well, that's not a lot. Well, I'll show you. That's 50 pounds, and 10% of that is a fiver. I'm sure she can do better than that. I mean, I don't really... They're not terribly exciting, are they? Not well, they're not exciting. exciting to me, no. They're a, a speculative oddball lot. They're very early, 80 to 120, journals of the House of Commons. Mm. I haven't got a clue what they're really worth. They're the type of thing that only a book dealer or a book specialist collector will really know. So, see what Alison says. Yeah. If you fancy going to auction, I think there's a reasonable chance. OK, mate, cheers. Well, I think you should go to auction, to be honest with you, because I really do feel I'm doing you a disservice. So would you like to go to auction, Yana? It's up to my dad. Yeah. Yes, I think that's what we'll do. We'll go to auction, yes. yes. All right, then. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Good thank luck, you very Tony, much. And thank you for coming. Cheers. You're still my favourite. Thank you. Thank you You're very welcome. much. We've decided to go to the auction. We need a new lawnmower, don't we? 55 quid what buy a new lawnmower, will it? I'm not really into dusty old books. I actually suspect they could go for quite good money despite their condition, but really out of my field. Well, if they're not your field, Alison, let's head over to Pastures New in the Cell. And you had some special books, a set of very old journals leather bound from the House of Commons. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. You turned down 55 quid. Yeah. Did you do the right thing, you wonder? Well, I hope so. I need a new lawnmower. OK. You can't get one for 55 quid. Needs a lawnmower, so we need to get a bit more than 55 quid. They're here in the sale room. The reserve's 80. What do you think? Are they going to make 80 quid? I don't know. <laughs> Neither do I, to be honest with you, Lyanna. I don't know either, but let's see what happens. Uh, there we go. Good period. Books, these. What do we say for them? Stop at £100. 100 pounds. 100 100 80 to go then, surely. 80 pounds, anybody? 80, I'll take 50 if you like. 50 down here. 50 and 5, surely. 50, the bid's in the room. And 5, surely. But I've got 50 five. pounds, five. too low. Reserve is 80. And 5 now, 65, 65. Bid 70. And 5 now, 75 bid. 80 bid. And 5. 80. Now, 80 pounds. Bid. Lawn mower's surely. looking good. Bids down here at 80. Are there any more bids? At 80 pounds. Are we all done for the journals then? At 80, it's in the room. Last call, done and finished at 80 pounds. Gavel has gone down at £80. Take away the commission, 65 quid. Yeah. That's going to go to the uh, lawnmower. Yeah. How high is the grass at the moment? It's about that high, but <laughs> once my girlfriend cuts it, then it'll be OK. okay. Yeah. So, 65 to take yeah. home. What a gentleman. He's buying the machine so his girlfriend can cut his grass. <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> you know, they'll be writing in. Those girls, they'll be writing in in their droves. On the day, that was the real deal. Back in the dealer's den, a smart cocktail watch has made its way onto Simon's table. Is happy hour about to begin? What can you tell me about your cocktail watch? Well, not a lot, really. I inherited it from my late mother-in-law um, 40 years ago. I've had it in my jewellery box for 40 years. So I brought it along sort of today. Bring along so you can turn it into yes, some cash. That's right. And over the last period that you've had it, the 40 years, have you ever worn it? No, at all? never, never. You were never sort of attracted to it no. as a timepiece. No, it's amazing, really. No. But I've got a gold watch and I've got a silver watch and I've got uh, other watches and I've just never bothered with it. I suppose by nature it's quite a dressy thing, isn't it? Yes. It's sort of, it is what we call a cocktail watch or a, right. or, or a dress watch. And yes. It actually dates from the 1930s and it's in style it's Art Deco. Yes. So I guess when your mother-in-law had it she probably may well have had it from new. Yes. If, if, you know, she probably had it 30 odd years or so before, yes. before you had it. Um, they're Swiss made watches and the case is made of platinum. And we've got these little diamonds, but it's yeah. a pretty little watch. You can see all yes. the little diamonds there. Yeah. The only thing I find with these watches, and it's probably as I've got older, is it's quite hard to read the faces on them. Yes, <laughs> because, I, I because suppose quite, that's why I never wore it. <laughs> they are quite small, and sometimes yes. it's quite difficult to, to actually see what the time is. That's with them. right. So they yeah. might not be the most practical things, but then perhaps they're for young people with good eyesight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nora, I would like to offer you today for your watch 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60, 
170 pounds. No, I don't think it's enough. You don't think it's enough? No. You think it's worth a little bit more than no. that? Yeah. Well, it is worth a little bit more because I want to try and make a profit on it. Yeah, <laughs> But maybe am I being a bit greedy is what you're saying, isn't yes. it? Politely, yes. you're trying to say that I'm not <laughs> trying I'm being to a bit be mean. to be polite, yes. What about if I was to add another 20 pounds, Nora, and offer you 190 pounds for it? You're getting close. I'll tell you where I am with this. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty watch, and I've had them before, and they're not the easiest things to sell. You think and when it's platinum, oh, you know, that's the most expensive metal. Absolutely. That get, yeah. What I am prepared to do, though, just because you've been so patient <laughs> with me, and so polite, not calling me mean, <laughs> I'm prepared to go to £200, but that would be my final offer. I think I'll accept that then. Well, thank you very much, and thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you. I thought it was a gamble to let it go to auction, and uh, so I accepted the offer, and I'm happy with it. It's funny that these watches aren't worth a bit more, to be honest, but as I said to Nora, I've had them in the past, and they've taken me quite a long while to sell, so hopefully this one will go a bit quicker, and hopefully I'll get a little profit on it. Coming up, David's fretting about Mr. Hakeney's wardrobe. Dave needs quite a bit of money to dress like that. <laughs> but can he lay enough cash out to fashion a deal? A thousand pounds. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Scunthorpe. It's the last deal of the day and a fabulous collection of military badges and coins has caught everyone's eye, including the Duke. Auctioneer Colin Young will want these in his sale room. Sir David Hayton will have to open his wallet I'm if he wants to own them. Hi, Mike. Well, this is an interesting lot here you've brought today. These are silver coins. Yep. And these are the... The regimental cap badges to go with the coins. And have been in. these are all the different regiments in England? Yeah, well, no, it's the 52 regiments that's disappeared completely. These are the regiments that have disappeared? Yeah, oh, well, in, that's in interesting. the pence cuts. Yeah. And did you buy this as a, a lot? Or? No, I actually uh, bought it monthly, one at a time. Oh, I see. Over four years. Yes, so it was a company that set this up that you bought one every yeah, month? Every month, Birmingham mm -hmm. Mint, yeah. Birmingham Mint, yeah. So the coins are solid silver, yep. and the, the badges and just iron eyes. are uh, a metal, yeah. Metal, yeah. Yeah, and a lovely case it comes in, yeah, a military case here with yep. the campaign-type box, lovely. What a nice outfit, eh? This is taking a long time to collect, then. It is, it's one of about, well, I've, I've got seven other uh, similar collections. And uh, is there a Lincolnshire uh, yep, the regiment here? Lincolnshire regiment one is, oh, that one is this one there, yep. which is the local regiment. Right. That well, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, Mike, you've spent all this time collecting it, so tell me why you're going to sell it, or may sell it. Well, the fact is, is I've, I've been a collector. I've got collections of medals, cap badges, stamps, cigarette cards, yeah, and I've got a loft literally full of uh, collectibles. You're a and real, true collector by the sounds of it. I might as well sell them and have some good old ideas. Well, don't start reinvesting the money in more collectibles, will no, you? No, no. <laughs> Make sure you have the holidays. Uh, holidays, yeah. <laughs> From your point of view, Colin, when you get these in, are you selling these to the trade who are sadly just looking at this as precious metal? Or are you finding someone who says, here is a collection for me and it's already made? You're getting a bit of both, and I, I hate to say it is a little bit of a 50-50 situation. Um, you would always hope with things like this, and of course it always depends on the, on the metal price on the day, it will always make what it is worth. But what we are hoping is that you will get another 10% for the client by way of a collector making that one bid more, but it is not clear cut. Well, there is about £1,275 right, okay. worth of value in silver. <laughs> Our dealer David will be looking closely at what this will scrap at. So let's see what he puts on the table. Well, I better get some dough out here and see if I can. Uh, nice. some, some spondulies and see if I can uh, tempt you up. It's an amazing outfit, this. Let me start uh, with 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 
300, 350, 400. You're not smelling it? No. 450, 500 pounds. And that's a no? And that's a definite no. I've got enough room for all this. 600, 650, 700, 750, Mike. No. We're not there yet? Not there yet. The auctioneer wants to get his hands on the lot. Will this competition spur David onto a higher bid? No. 750, 800, 850, 900. No, not Are we on profit? Mm. Nearly. Oh, nearly. A thousand pounds. A thousand pounds now on the table, Colin. Nice round figure. Nice round figure. Is it worth more? I think it should do more than that if it goes to auction. OK. I need to get in there and tell our seller it's worth a bit more than that. I think you could just go a little bit more. Here's some advice coming. Whenever I see these limited edition collections, they, they always pose a bit of a problem, because I know that people over the years have placed their money into limited editions advertised by various companies, and the expectation was this will pay dividends for you long term. It will be a, a worthwhile collection, and of course it will increase in value. But sadly, we are looking at the silver content only. The good news here is the value of silver. If we were to take this to a bullion dealer today and scrap it, there is £1,275 worth of silver. On the table is how much, Dave? £1,000. I'm going to say you're close to it here, but if the gavel went down in the auction at 1000 quid, they take off 15% from you. And our dealer, David, realises that. So, is that it for you, Dave, or are you prepared to sweeten the pot a little bit more? There is 1,275 quid should you scrap this. The question is, how much margin of profit does, does Dave want to earn? Well, Dave needs quite a bit of money to dress like that. <laughs> I get them off him. Yeah. <laughs> He's finished with them. You know, those ties and... Yeah. He, needs a, he needs a few quid to keep this appearance up. I get them off David. Yeah. So, come down. on, come on. Can we have a little bit more? I'll give 1,100 quid. OK. I'm going to walk away here and I'm going to say with £1,100, it leaves a sporting fair margin of profit for David. Sir, David! You've bought yourself a nice collection here. I think it's a good deal. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Have we had a deal, Mike? I think we've had a deal at that. I think it's a really interesting collection. Thank you. I'll try not to scrap it. I hope not. Quite happy with the £1,100. I know I can now go have a nice holiday and I'm going to book a cruise with the money. A fascinating collection of coins, medals. I think I'll find a customer for these. I don't think they'll get scrapped. Oh, David promises, promises. But in the end, that's exactly what David did. And the gold jewellery. Anything to say for yourself, David? <laughs> well, at least the Moorcroft found a home with a collector, bagging David a £30 profit. That's a good bit of... Alison only bought one thing today, the Royal Worcester plates. I probably shan't be selling them. You'll be keeping them? Yes. And true to her word, they're now Chapman family heirlooms. Simon managed to pinch himself a terrific deal with the table salts. He sold them at a trade fair for 400. And finally, Debbie had her concerns. Just not anything that I would ever use. That worries me. But she needn't have worried. That bird laid a 30 pound golden egg right in the palm of her hand. David? We've had a great day. There's been lots of atmosphere, lots of action, lots of buying, lots of selling. That's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time. Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.